So, uh, we got a problem today over here at the ranch. We're going to call it the ranch today. All right. SWRC Ranch. Uh, we're in the middle of painting a car. Actually, we're not painting it yet. What we are doing is um, getting it ready to paint. Come on over here. So, if you look right here, this is the car we're getting ready to paint. Now, I was hoping to paint this thing today. But we got some extensive sanding to do on it still. And we'll have it all sanded here after lunch. And then we got to, of course, change all the filters out in our paint booth. And steam clean the floors, this, that, and the other. But the real problem is, is we can't paint nothing. Because we got serious problems over here at the ranch. And let's go out there and show you what kind of problems we have. This is the breaker box for my uh, main air compressor. I got it wired all the way up through the other box over to here so we can turn it off and on at night. Uh, when I go outside, I want you to turn that on, okay, and then we'll see what happens. Now, here's my two air compressors, and I've made videos about my air compressors before several years back, and this is part of the problem you have when you own a ranch like my friend Pete's ranch. We'll call it the auto ranch today. Um, is that you need a compressor because that is basically your main tool. If you look over here, these are actually extra pumps. One of the best pumps ever built. It's a Campbell Hosfield, uh, about a 1957 models. Uh, those are extra backups. I got to rebuild those because my backups have uh, gotten down to the only one I have left is this baby right here. Um, and it still works. It's a nice nice compressor I love that pump and check it out and read up on it and you'll see that this pump is actually better than this pump here now this compressor we're looking at right here this is my backup unit um, it doesn't work too good but it pumps air so I can stay working in case my main compressor right here old Bertha blows up so we had the motor completely rebuilt uh, worked great and now what happens is the motor is dragging very bad now we had this motor rebuilt uh, less than a year ago it cost two hundred dollars and something's seriously wrong so I'm gonna see if we are getting a full 220 volts to the motor itself by using this little tester item right here uh, this is a tester that will tell me how many volts I'm getting so what I did is I disconnected a wire uh, in the box here one of the hot wires and then I'm going to have MIDI turn on the power and we will go ahead and hook it up and see what kind of juice we got at our starter box. Alright, turn it on. Okay, hold it right there. Okay, it's showing that we have, uh, we're up to like 271 volts. We're in between 300 and 271 volts. Turn it off. Okay, hang on a minute. So now that we've checked it up here coming into, let's see what it's doing coming out. All right, turn it on. All right, hold it. So we're gonna go ahead and test it here. And we got the same power. Uh, we got the same power it's saying 277 volts so we know that this is working turn it off so we know that's working 
So the only problem that we're looking at is basically the motor itself. Um, once again, I had this motor rebuilt. Uh, it ran very, very good. I can actually feel that it's hot, and it was only running for approximately several minutes. I'm going to go ahead and hook this up so you can see what it's doing. Uh, we'll go ahead and hook our wires back up because I want to check it now that we know we're getting 277 volts of electricity we're going to go ahead and reconnect this thing and see what it does maybe we had a loose wire I don't know but I seriously doubt it so let's get all our wires hooked up back onto the unit and then we'll check it out and then now we'll have Mitty go ahead and start that up and I'm going to show you what the motor's doing. Okay, go ahead and turn it on. All right, turn it off. All right, so you can see how slow the motor's running. It's dragging. I'm thinking that the, uh, the copper windings or uh, one of the capacitors in here, there's three capacitors that's inside this box. One of those are blown out. I'm not really up on motors, but I've owned a lot of these motors. Uh, here's another one over here that still runs like brand new. These motors are very expensive, by the way, just to let everybody know, unless you buy a reconditioned one online. Um, this is a starter box. This is actually what is, starts the motor so the motor doesn't drag and uh, uh, create this problem that we're having here. So I'm going to go in and call the compressor company first. Uh, this is actually a brand new starter box. These are about $200. And I literally replace these about every two years. This one's about a year old. You can see it's still brand new. And uh, yeah, so that's the situation we have. So do you think it's going to be the electric motor or the starter? We know it's not the pump. I don't know. Yeah. You don't know. I don't know. So you don't know because you just don't know or... Because I just don't know. Yeah. I don't know nothing All about right. those things. Yeah, uh, you got the breaker box off, right? The breaker box okay. is off. I'm going to go in there and call them. Uh, if you want to keep wet sanding, I'd appreciate it. All right. All right. So the guy that uh, rebuilt the motor, he seems like he's a really nice guy, and I don't think he would rip anybody off. Um, he did kind of screw me around on the time frame of it. Uh, he told me it would be done the next day, and I actually had to wait a week to get it back because he was going out of town, and he said he would have it done before he went out of town. Now, this guy that owns this shop uh, is literally almost an hour and a half to two hours away. So I was pretty pissed off when I went all the way over there and he wasn't fucking open. And if anybody has a shop that owns an air compressor, this is one of the worst nightmares you can have because it seems like when the air compressor breaks down and the machine goes south on you, it always happens in times of trouble like right now. So we're going to call... I think his name is Richard over at uh, H&K Pump Services down there in Dallas. I've been dealing with these people for a very long time. And this is actually the son of the owner. The owner passed away, Keaton, um, senior Gene Keaton. And uh, God rest his soul, very nice guy that he was. So we'll give uh, Richard a call and see if he answers. And hopefully he can help us out. Is this, Hello? Yeah. Is this Richard? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. On my air compressor, the motor drags real bad and it blows my breaker. So, I got a brand new Eaton uh, starter box that I bought from your dad about whenever I bought it. But it's a newer style. Yeah. And uh, I took the belts off of the uh, compressor and the motor spins very very slowly now I had the motor rebuilt approximately a year and a half ago by uh, best electric motors you ever heard of them out there yeah I know them. okay so I had him rebuild the motor and when I first got it back it worked awesome and then the motor started buzzing real loud and then it would kick in so I don't know if it's the between the starter box or the motor. I don't what what kind of problems would that be, Richard? Motor. Is that the motor? The is it the windings or do you think it's one of the uh, capacitors? It's hard to say, but 
So it's not the starter box, it's not the relay starter box, it would be the motor itself dragging. Yeah, there, there's an issue there somewhere. So you think uh, the capacitor's bad or what? Well, it could be. I mean, you look at the top of them and see if the, they look like they're leaking or anything like that. Like they're leaking? Yes. Yeah, they look brand new. Okay, well, I don't that's see, not it then. I don't, see any, like, I don't see anything like it blew up or anything. Uh, I'm something else then. Okay. I'll call you when we get ready to leave to make sure you're there. Yeah, because i gotta, I got to run and pick some stuff up sometime today. But yeah, just call ahead of time. All right, see you later. All right, bye-bye. Okay, so I had the motor rebuilt, and the motor was this much money. Now he's telling me that I can get a Baldor for 600 or buy a Made in Korea one for 500 Um, I don't know what to fucking do here. Uh... Let's call uh, AAA and see what they say. I don't even want to go to AAA. Because this guy rebuilt the motor. I should go back to him. The problem is, is the motherfucker's, you know, an hour and a half, two hours away. That's the problem anyhow. That's the situation. We gotta do something though. We gotta fucking do something. Well, um, we took the motor down to the electrical place and we found out that the old motor that I've had for like 26 years or whatever the fuck I've had at 29 years finally uh, took a dump. So what we did is we had to literally buy another motor for the air compressor and It wasn't fucking good. I ended up spending $555 for this motor. But uh, that's the situation you have because um, we got to have the air compressor working to have the body shop working. Without our air compressor, um, it's not working. Uh, I also found out on my um, other air compressor, which is a Schultz pump, five horse pump, um, the valves in that are not reed valves. They are actually spring-loaded valves, and the reason that that is not pumping properly is probably because a couple of the springs are either broke or collapsed. And when I talked to the compressor guy, uh, he said that it would probably be worthless to fix that machine because the output on that, the CFM on that, is only around between 18 CFM and 23 CFM, and my... Uh, Big Bertha uh, compressor, which is our Campbell Hosfield compressor, puts out 28 and a half CFM, and that's really what I need. The CFM is what really counts when it comes to the compressor situation. And uh, let's go get our motor. Let's check it out because we got to get this thing hooked back up. We got a car to paint today. So uh, you're not really happy about buying that brand new motor for 555 bucks? Well. Not really, but I mean, let's yeah. get it put in. Well, we in left so the other motor over there. He said he could probably fix that. I know. I thought I was supposed to for a backup unit. Yeah. No, I don't know. I gotta call him back and see what's going on. Can you come over here and shut this door when I get this motor out? This thing weighs like 200 pounds. Yeah, I guess I can. You know, we gotta put the pulley on it and get it all rigged up. All right, let's get her done, man. Yeah. Don't trip and fall. Oh shit. So what we got here, we got the Baldor five horse motor. Now this puts out um, 1725 RPM. And when you're getting these motors for your air compressors, you got to make sure that you get the right motor that has the right RPM. They actually have 1725, uh, I think it's uh, 2350. And then there's another one that's a little bigger than that, 2800 or something. But if you get the wrong uh, RPM motor, that is not designed for your compressor pump, you'll blow your pump up because that pump is designed to run at a certain RPM. And if you go over that RPM, what happens? It's like revving your motor up on your car, right here, and just holding the pedal down until the motor blows out in park. So that's another important issue when dealing with uh, air compressors. So we got the Baldor 1725. Now, 
I got another pulley coming for that other air compressor because I'm going to keep the other air compressor. He said he can rebuild it, but I'm going to use it for a backup unit. I also have the one on my spare compressor. So I'm getting ready to move to uh, another state and another town, and I want to make sure I have backup shit. Or should I say poo? Poo. You know, that's actually an insult when you say that. Why? Because. I was trying not to cuss. I was trying no, that's to be a, nice. No, that's an insult when you say poo. Why? And you relate it to shit. Because poo is Winnie the Pooh. Okay? And when you think of poo, you think of diarrhea, and Winnie the Pooh isn't diarrhea. Winnie the Pooh is a, a very friendly character, right, that everybody loves. So, I think we ought to keep the two words away from each other. Okay, will do. So, we got to get the motor out of the box, because I want to keep this box for my other motor. And you can grab that into the box. I'm going to pull it out. Son of a bitch! I had to get a bite on it. Hang on. Because I want to keep this box and board for our spare motor. Okay. Nice and handy to carry it around. Damn it! It's top heavy. I'll try one more time. There we go. Ready? Go! It's not gonna go. There it is. Come on. Okay. Believe me, that thing's heavy. How many people does it take to unpack a motor? If you want a razor blade, I've got a razor blade. Yeah, can you give me a razor blade? I don't, I don't know if my box theory is going to work with my old motor because it's saran wrap and we're not, we don't have any saran wrap, so... Okay. It's like Christmas! We need to keep that. I'll put it away somewhere where I know where it's at. Oh my god, it'll be lost forever now. So, when you get your brand new motor in the box, um, it comes with everything to show you how to wire it up, and of course, I'm sure there's some type of warranty card here, or some bullshit, but yeah, that comes with it. Uh, that's great. So, this is the five horse motor. If Minnie can go ahead and get that out of there. And another thing about getting a compressor motor is you gotta make sure that the compressor motor fits on your frame. Now, when I say your frame, I'm talking about all the holes that are drilled out on the top of your air compressor. There's different frame uh, settings and different frame feet. So you gotta know that you got the right one. Um, the reason I went with Baldor is because uh, I actually own several of these Baldor motors and the last one, which is the one over at, uh, where? The repair shop. Yeah, the repair shop. That one actually I've had for like going on 28 years. And I had, I've only had to have it rebuilt one time. And the guy said that uh, the problem issue is probably in the back of the motor right here. Uh, when you take this off, there's a contact plate inside there that has points. And he said what's happening is the points are sticking. So he said that he can be rebuild it and fix the problem and it should work okay. But he wouldn't rely on it being so old that it'll probably break down. I took his word and I bought another compressor, so, yeah, uh, is this one set up just like my other one? Looks like yeah, it. I guess it is. Okay, so what we got to do is we got to take this pulley, and another thing about compressors that uh, you really need to know your P's and Q's about is what size pulley should I use on the motor. It all depends on what type of compressor you got and what horsepower you have because the motor pulley has to match the compressor pulley to get the specific RPM that you need. Um, the RPM that I need is the 1725. That's going to take a six and a half inch pulley to do the job. So um, many years back I had to buy a new pulley because the pulley that I had was uh, cracked. And I had issues with the belt sliding up. Remember that? Every time I turned on, a fucking belt would pop off. And it would really suck. Can you give me a mallet, please, out of this toolbox right here? So, I got another pulley coming. We're going to go ahead and use this pulley on this motor, because I need this. That's fine. I need this motor now, and I had to order another pulley. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and put that on. This 
just like this, and I know exactly where it goes. And the reason I know I know where it goes is because I know my air compressors. Plain and simple. So then we'll take our Allen wrench. We're going to go ahead and tighten up our Allen bolts that hold the pulley onto the uh, shaft. And you want to make sure that these are done properly as well. And when you're using your Allen wrench, uh, try not to over tighten it because what happens is you break your Allen wrench. Yeah, sure. And uh, hopefully that will fall out of there just like that. Broke the head off the Allen wrench. Great. All right, so let's get outside. We got our 916 wrenches and. Uh, we need a screwdriver, flat screwdriver, and get a Phillips while you're at it. And let's get our compressor running because I got a car to paint. Is the gate open? Uh, probably not. Well, go open the gate. This thing's heavy. I'll meet you out there. Hurry up. this thing set up and get her done. Oh, son of a bitch. Okay, we got our uh, compressor hooked up. Uh, motor is installed, brand new. Very important to make sure the alignment is perfect. What I did before I took it off, I scribed the line right here and I made sure that it was lined back up. That will make your belts pop off. And it's very important to make sure that that thing's properly lined because what will happen is every time you start it up, sooner or later, eventually the belts are going to pop off and you're going to have to keep messing with it. Another thing that makes the belts pop off is this pulley right here uh, can either have a hairline crack in it or it just becomes useless. So that's your main two reasons why your belts will be popping off, just to let you know. Um, what we're going to do is go ahead and change our oil out. And this is going to be kind of a sloppy mess the way that this is designed, but we're going to go ahead and do the best we can to catch the oil that we can, and then we'll clean the rest up later. I want you to look how dirty this oil is. Come on over here. Go ahead and pull that out. And you can see that it's just mucky, ugly, black shit. It's just nasty. Look at that. Wow, that's a great way to drain it. Well, how else are you gonna drain it? I've tried every way. I even put a, I even took a rubber hose and put it in there and tried to do it that way. This is the only way we can do it. Wow. Yeah, no shit. So it turns out to be a real mess doing this. Uh, the only suggestion I have is to actually um, take, bring your pressure washer out here and pressure wash your air compressor. Uh, kind of a shitty design the way they got this, but. This framework, like I was telling you, you got this frame going on here, and the way the frame is set up is for different holes, and these just happen to be the holes for this air compressor, and that's where the drain is. So you can see that we're not getting a lot of oil, but like I said, we will clean all this mess up once it's drained out. It's a mess. Um, I was gonna tell you about oil. Uh, do not use motor oil in an air compressor. Motor oil does not work. It will work to lubricate your parts, but it will not work to make your air compressor uh, last a very long time. Like I said, this is a 1957 Campbell Hotsfield, a D127. Um, if many folks is over there, you can see I got two other ones laying on the ground. Can you zoom into that so they can see that? So I am very, uh, uh, I believe in these old Campbell Hossfields cast iron jobs and they work very, very well. Come on back over here now. And uh, if you look at that air compressor while we're letting the air, uh, let, letting the oil drain out, if you look at that air compressor, you can see that's a, called a V-twin Schultz. And look at the head. See the heads on that one versus the head on this one? 
This one has reed valves in it. Now what reed valves are, they're thin plates that are stacked on top of each other and they're their own spring mechanism versus the Schultz air compressor which actually has springs in the valves and they can actually collapse or break and cause serious problems as far as producing air. And overall, I'm going to tell you right now, if you can come across one of these Campbell Hoffs, it doesn't look like much, you're going to say to yourself, that's a, you know, a small air compressor. This is not a small air compressor. All right, this pump right here is a heavy-duty industrial pump. They've sold millions of them, millions. At one time, this was the number one pump nationwide, probably Canada, and who knows where else. But I'm going to tell you that this Campbell Hosfield D127 is a tank. A fucking tank. Now we got to get this off. Now, a lot of people would look at this air compressor and say, this is where you fill the oil up. No, you don't. Okay, this is where you fill the oil right here. Um, this compressor here is, should take a little bit over a quart. It shouldn't be much more than a quart of oil. Uh, usually the way that you tell is you got this little sight glass here and you can see that the sight glass is pretty much dead issue. So These things don't burn oil, do they? Well, what happens if you fill them up with oil, too much oil, uh, they'll go past the piston rings and then you start getting oil in your lines. Oh, that's not good. When you start seeing oil in your lines, that means that your piston rings are going out and you need to pay attention. Uh, luckily, I won't say that this isn't getting some oil in it, but it's not getting a lot of oil and it's still uh, working pretty good uh, for being how old it is. So we're going to go ahead and put our brand new oil in it. This is not motor oil once again, many. I know Pete, it's air compressor oil. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So if you look inside the uh, filler hole for our oil, that's where you want it. You want it right where the threads end. That's the compressor logo, that's the uh, rule of thumb. If your sight glass doesn't work, it should be filled up right to the bottom of the threads to your plug. This here compressor actually takes a quart and a half. And now if I look close, I don't know if you can see that, but I can barely see it in there. I can barely see the oil. It's about right here. Alright, so we know our starter box is good. I'm going to go ahead and put the switch back on this. Or the cover, I mean. That's our reset switch. Um, if you want to show them that one, that's an older version of what I'm working on here. Uh, that's the kind, that's basically the same thing as this. This one over here just happens to be a newer model. This is an older one, does the same thing. And what a starter is, very important when you got a big compressor like this. What a starter is, it's actually a relay. It actually carries the load for the compressor to kick over and run properly. So it's very important that you have a starter box. And I've been through a bunch of these. They don't last forever, right, Benny? Yeah. All right, so you can see this is a good air compressor. It's been broke down for a couple days. Still has 100 pounds in it. Um, and uh, we got a brand new motor. That should fix our problem. We've changed the oil in our pump and our starter box is hooked up. Hello? All right, kick it over. Here we go. There you go. You can see running great, sounding great, and it's an awesome situation. Old Bertha is back in business and uh, pumping air like she's never pumped before. The motor is really, really quiet. I'm happy with that. And uh, this job is done. Expensive situation, always take care of your equipment, it'll last forever. That's the real deal here. It's called preventive maintenance. As far as the motors go, you ain't got no choice but to do what you gotta do. Like I said, I had the other one rebuilt. Um, it's over there getting fixed right now, but it's only gonna be a backup unit in case this motor goes out. Hopefully I'll be out of business before this one goes out. And then of course, speaking of backups, we still got this bitch right here. Uh, I might go ahead and rebuild the valves in them just because it's a backup unit. And if for some reason our compressor blows up our pump, I will probably go ahead and purchase an industrial air pump because it'll be a brand new Y2K. And to rebuild this pump completely, 
would cost approximately $700 for parts. That's why these are still sitting here. And for another $125, $30, I can buy a brand new pump. And uh, I don't know what I'll do with these. Probably use them for a wall hanging or a shelf ornament. But uh, they've painted a lot of cars. A lot of cars, uh, a lot of shit's been going on with these and they're hard to get rid of. It's kind of like losing an old friend when you get rid of compressors that you've had forever. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, keeping up to date and hopefully keeping up with the air compressor that I need so badly to keep my, there you go, looky there, business going. One more thing about this air compressor I want to show you. You can see this valve on the back of the crank. Um, this is a pressure relief valve. Uh, those are the best kind of compressors to own. Because if you look at this one here, you don't see no pressure relief valve. But we do have an oil dipstick. Let's see what that is. Yeah. Okay, looking good. All right. We'll put him back to sleep. And uh, hopefully he will be there when we need him. And uh, we'll keep old Bertha running because I got a 1944 to paint. It's a situation that says, you know what? Nothing fucking lasts forever. We'll see you later. My friend Pete, your friend Pete. Staying calm through the situation of a bad situation to make this situation better by finding the solutions it takes to do it right.